All right, that was an incredible piece of music by Misha Penton. And uh, it's part of a suite of music called Radiant Poison. We are very lucky to have Misha here with us to talk about this music. So Misha, thank you for joining all the way from Houston. Thank you, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it, it's a pleasure. Yeah, well, I mean, when I, I, I don't, quite remember how I ended up clicking through all of your videos but just I know you sent me an email and uh I just lost it you know went down the rabbit trail and I was like <laughs> wow this person holy cow she does everything visual artist musician composer um teacher many things so tell us a little about yourself and uh let's get the world excited about your stuff well, thanks so much. Really, thank you. I really appreciate um, appreciate you listening, really, and um, being excited about it. Um, yeah, so um, I'm really voice-based in the kind of work that I do. And so um, the music really comes from 
that um, working with multi-layered voices initially. Um, and um, I have a history of creating live performance works. And then even before the pandemic really got into um, recording and um, actually working with other composers and then transitioning and writing for my own voice and then making music videos. And so I was kind of already going down that road um, when, you know, the world got turned upside down. Um, so, um, you know, I have a, a background in classical music, but I've sung with rock bands and I have a lot of diverse influences. And, and um, you know, I hope that I can more and more bring that to, to what I'm doing too. I really like the idea of sort of fusing different um, music, different styles of music or different ways of using the voice. Um, yeah, you were mentioning a little to me earlier about the influence of King Crimson, who is a very, very popular band on this channel. So can you talk about your connection to King Crimson, uh, to their music and to the artists uh, in the band? Yeah, sure. Um, early on, um, you know, as many of us who love the band, um, the Court of the Crimson King was, um, you know, huge thing. I really love actually, um, I know they're known so much for their instrumental um, prowess, but there's so many great ballads, very obscure, um, you know, like Moonchild from the Court of the Crimson King and Epitaph and Cadence and Cascade and the songs from Islands like Form and Terra Lady and all of like all of those like delicate star the, the beginning of Starless, Starless and Bible Black that, um, you know, so those singers um, and and those kind of just those dreamy melodies and the lyrics, the imagistic lyrics hugely uh, resonated with me. Um, and then really, um, Robert Fripp's aphorisms, like I, I became enamored with this whole idea of the, you know, the discipline of the craft of creation, right? Like creating work. And that really, really spoke to me. Um, so that's kind of sort of my, you know, the things that that originally drew me to the band. And then also just like the virtuosity, sure, you know, um, that I think everybody loves about the work. Um, so, so that's kind of my initial relationship with that kind of music. And then I love a lot of the early prog bands, like Yes, uh, John Anderson and early Deep Purple, love, the, love Ian Gillen singing. Um, you know, a lot of those early, um, you know, like rock singers, like Dio is another one, um, you know, just lots, of, there's just, you know, there's so, it's so, such a rich history, right? Absolutely, you know, that, yeah. that sort of like, um, British rock of the seventies. So, yeah. And then you have a connection with Trey Gunn. Can you talk about, uh, how you know Trey? Yeah, sure. I um, I was a fan of his music, um, knowing who he was through Crimson and then his solo work and, um, you know, followed his work for a long time. And and then he started coaching and teaching and um, creating these modes courses um, and which I've signed up for every time he's done it. And it's a great community of people and it's a cool way of thinking of music. And he's very cool and laid back. And I've done some coaching sessions with him. And um, so that's been great. You know, as an artist, it's been great. It's been a treat to be connected. Excellent. So tell us, uh, we're gonna listen to the next part of Radiant Poison. Uh, can you tell us a little about what we heard with that opening piece? And um, you know, how do you put these pieces together? Uh, because they are out there, you know, <laughs> and they're beautiful. But like, my daughter was sitting here last night as I was prepping for this, and I listened to Radiant Poison a couple of times, and she was like, "What is this, Daddy?" <laughs> you know. And uh, I love 
just I love giving my kids, you know, music that throws them off, uh, you know, out into left field. But tell us about your composition technique. How do you come up with this type of music and what's going on um, in your performance? Because the range is incredible. You're singing in English, you know, operatic style. And then uh, there are lyrics, although some of it sounds like it could be improvised sound. So tell us all about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I love that reaction from your daughter. That's just like, I will carry that with me. I love that. Um, thanks. Um, so I start with um, like text or poetry that I've written. And I work with that um, initially improvisationally with my voice. And and, and then I start to kind of work with actually like notating parts of it. Some of the pieces on the EP um, are more notated in terms of the voice part than, um, than others, or there's only three, but um, <laughs> so, so, um, so I start with the voice and I start with the poetry and I kind of work with that in an embodied way with my voice. And then I rec start recording the work um, and I create something I think of as the lead voice. And I record that first. And then I layer in the other voices. And I'm really interested also in like where speech meets singing. So in the Visible Darkness track, there's a lot of kind of spoken, sung um, parts to it. Um, so I put together the voice tracks first. And then for this particular project, I worked with Chris Becker, who's an electronic musician, and George Heathco, a guitarist. And they both know my work really well. And I've worked with them in live situations too. And um, I asked Chris to just send me some tracks, some, just send me tracks and let me just do whatever I wanted to do with them. <laughs> and so that's what I did. I um, put them in with the voice parts and kind of relied on sort of a random happy accident thing initially, and then refined that and created um, a, a rough mix that I sent to George. And I just said to George, do whatever you want. And so then he sent me back <laughs> his uh, guitar tracks, I think there's, there's a number of them, like four to six guitar tracks. Um, and so that's how it took shape. And I kind of just allowed it to have kind of a life of its own. Like I didn't control it too much. Um, and, and so that's how these, that's how these tracks, um, these three tracks went together. Awesome. Neil Ellis Orts said a friend's child was watching one of Misha's videos and asked, is this a dream? And Neil said, yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that. All right. I'm going to pull up the uh, next video. Okay. Just got to do a screen share.
All right, another beautiful haunting piece. This one has a little more uh, metal to it with the guitar. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sort of cymbal crashes. Um, tell us about the visual aspects. I mean, you call this a music video EP, and uh, that's a unique thing in and of itself. Um, did you have visuals in mind before, during, or after? the composition and completion of these pieces? Kind of, um, it sort of came together in a kind of a fragmented um, by chance way in, in some regards. Like I had ideas for the visuals, but they were not necessarily literally connected to the music. Um, and some of the things had been filmed um, before some of the music was created and, and some after and some really close to the create, you know, during the production phase. So um, what I do with the editing for the visuals is similar to um, what I was talking about before with the music um, is that I'll go in and create kind of a rough edit of the visuals and then put the music in and then see, oh, what's going on here? Like, what's the relationship between the images and the sound and, and refine it from there, manipulate it from there. Um, and most of it, um, like some of it was filmed in a vacant lot on the street that I live on and the, the graphic score drawings that was in the, my living room. Um, so a, a lot of what I do is, is try to use what I've got, use what 
at, at what is at hand? Like what, what, what can I do with what I have rather than, um, uh, you know, I need this laundry list of things to realize my vision, you know? <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of how I went about that. And I, and, and I also have things that have kind of like a stock file of things of that I filmed or um, my collaborators, Dave Nickerson or Raul Casares are the two filmmakers um, have filmed. And so I can pull from that and um, kind of make kind of it's sort of collage like in the way that I think of it. And, and sort of the music has that way of being too. There's something um, collage like about it. I noticed another concept or theme running through your um, website and your the way you describe your music. Um, well, first of all, the, the words you use are interesting. Um, you've got, you say, my music sounds like a blend of futuristic art song, avant spoken word, sound poetry, and chamber electronica. You will hear the rise and fall of many layered voices and the swirling guitars and electronic sound worlds created by me and my collaborators. Uh, it sounds like you know, <laughs> like this stuff is not of today, of like modernity. It's kind of like seeking a future that you hope to exist through music and word and sound. Can you tell us uh, a little more about that approach? Yeah, that's really beautifully put. Thank you. Um, sometimes when somebody sees something and says it back to you, like what you just did it really resonates. So um, yeah, it, it feels like it's coming from a, some other dream place that's inside of me, outside of me, I don't know, um, inside of everybody. Um, certainly the people that I work with, um, understand where I'm coming from. And so they have been so generous in um, kind of allowing this work to emerge for me and helping to shepherd it into the world. So that's a, a gift to me. I do want to mention um, Todd Hulsander who mastered the album so beautifully too. Um, he's somebody that I've recorded a lot with um, and he knows my voice very, very, very well. So that's, that was a, a treat to work with him too. Um, so, so it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe it's like I, like you said, it's like, the, like a potential future, what I want the world to sound like or the, if, the emotional landscape of, of the utopia. And, and I want that reflected back to me um, in the people that I work with and the people that hear it. Excellent. Um, Stacy Irick or Irish. Uh, I don't know if you know her. I, I, I don't. Hi, okay. Stacy. Hi, Stacy. I uh, hope you're well. She asks, does your process ever deviate from film or visuals to sound? It feels like oral and visual poetry to me. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you, Stacy. Um, it uh, so it it the tracks do exist um, as just um, music tracks um, to listen to. So they can be decoupled, I suppose, is, is sort of the idea. Um, the album on Bandcamp exists as the individual tracks and then the liner notes in the PDF gives you the links to experience the videos. Um, I, growing up on MTV, dating myself a little bit, huge music video, fan like when I made the first music video that I ever made I was just like um like it was the most amazing like thing to have done <laughs> so um and now you know it's relatively easy to do in a sense right with the tech that we have now um so so I'm I I love music videos I, I it is challenging I think to um uh, because it is rather resource heavy. Um, that's why I think it's important to um, be as creative as you can um, with the medium um, so that you don't end up with a giant budget and, you know, a Cecil B. DeMille, you know, 
kind of uh, production. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, there's a lot of videos on Misha's website, um, and that's here in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, MishaPenton.com. Uh, she's also selling her music on Bandcamp, so Misha Penton, Misha Penton bandcamp.com i hope i'm pronouncing your name uh, correctly ah, okay great you are and um so you can go to her Bandcamp page and there is a Bandcamp friday according to sharon our uh, wonderful moderator uh, cool. on september 2nd which means that anything you buy from her Bandcamp, uh she gets the full proceeds so yeah please do that and there's a lot of music videos it's funny how you mentioned it takes a lot of resources to do music videos and you have like 30 of them on your <laughs> <laughs> on your page. Sharon did ask if you plan on performing any of these pieces live. And after you answer that, we're going to wrap up. So that'll be the last question. Yeah, um, I do perform live. I don't have um, I don't have the vision to perform these pieces live specifically. I think they could it could it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> Excellent. So. Um, yeah, anyone who's watching, first of all, thank you for joining and getting this far and staying with thank us. Thank you. And yeah, and Misha, thank you for your wonderful music. Thank really you so it. much. Yeah, of course. Uh, so there is the famous like button here on this uh, video, right below the screen here somewhere. And uh, it would be great if you could click that and tell the YouTube algorithm this was really cool. Um, so the like button helps to get this music in front of more people. Make Weird Music exists not to promote itself, but to promote great artists like Misha. And um, we have a little join button if you want to support our channel. It's uh, three bucks a month. You get early access to a lot of unreleased stuff. Right now I'm working on a, a whole series about Gentle Giants' new um, 10 LP box set. Uh, working with the band, which is pretty cool. So you'll see some stuff on the official Gentle Giant channels and then some stuff on Make Weird Music. And uh, I film a lot of stuff that just doesn't get released because I don't have time to edit it all. So if you want to join Make Weird Music's Club Weird, just click that Join button below and uh, hit Subscribe if you're not a subscriber and follow us on all the social media. Uh, Misha is on Instagram and Facebook, so be sure to like her pages. I'm sure Sharon will link to those in the... Um, in the chat so we're going to listen to one final piece the third piece of radiant ra radiant poison and um let me just get my screen shared you have the floor for a minute there misha <laughs> all right well thanks so much for having me it's been a treat to be here and talk about the music and um and and share some ideas with you and it's great. Thanks so much. Awesome. All right. Here we go. Just trees is a sign of us. 
as it rises from the desert land. Abdomen hovers above the sparkles, twisted skyscrapers, and legs easily navigate. Oh, oh, oh. 